Today's lesson is 4.5, which is investigating the cosine law. You already have seen the cosine law. So as before, you're just going to review what you learned in grade 10 applied. But before I go any further, remember, in any triangle ABC, if you have two angles, OK? And another side which is in front of any one of these angles, meaning either side BC or either side AC, because they are in front of the given angles, you can use sine law. Okay? This is what we call AAS, angle, angle, side. So you can use sine law using the case of two angles and a side. Another case that you can use sine law is oops, in a triangle like ABC, if you have two sides, let's say this side and this one, AB and BC, and an angle in front of either one of these two sides, let's say angle C, which is in front of this guy, or angle A, which is in front of this guy, then you can use sine law. This is called SSA, which is side, side, A, angle, okay? So either one of these two cases, you can go ahead and use sine law. But the problem starts when you don't have either one of these cases. When you have two sides and an angle between them, which we call the contained angle, or if you have three sides. If you have three sides, you can see that there is no way I can use sine law because no angle is known. If you have two sides and an angle between them, then you can't have that ratio solved. Okay? So you have to use something like cosine law. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the formula for cosine law. Okay. So. Although the sine law can be used for a lot of triangles, it is not going to solve all of them. I told you the only ones you can use sine law are AAS or SSA, angle, angle, side, or side, side, angle. But remember, the side has to be in front of the angle or the angle has to be in front of the side. Otherwise, you cannot use sine law. The cosine law represents a general version of Pythagorean theorem adapted to nine not right triangles. Now, the question is that when am I going to use cosine law? Again, when you have two sides and an angle between them, let's say side C and side A, then you can use cosine law. Or if you have three sides, then you can use cosine law. Now, how are you going to cos use cosine law is very simple. Let's say the side unknown is side C. Then I'm going to use the sum of the square of the other two sides, meaning a squared plus b squared, minus, I'm going to subtract twice the product of those two sides, a and b, times the cos of the angle, which is in front of the side on the left side of the equal sign, which is cosine of c. So c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. This is one version of cosine law. Because remember, you have three sides of a triangle. I can write this equality in three form. I can have side A on the left, meaning A squared is equal something on the right. Or I can have side B on the left, which is B squared equals something on the right. But the pattern is the same. Remember, any side on the left square is equal to the cosine of the angle in front of it. So if I have a squared on the left, the cosine is going to be cosine of angle a. If I have a, a side b on the left, it's going to be b squared here, but the cosine is going to be cosine of b. 
And the squares here, the sum of the squares is going to be the sum of the other two sides minus twice the product of those two sides. Now, there are possibilities that you want to solve for the angle instead of the side C. Then what you do is that you are going to isolate cos C, which you're going to end up with this formula. How you're going to end up with this formula is very easy. I'm going to move this guy to the left and this guy to the right. When I move C squared to the right, it's going to change to what? Negative C squared. So I get A squared plus B squared negative C squared. Then this guy, negative 2AB cos C, when it goes to the left, it becomes what is going to positive 2AB cos C. So then I'm, I'm sorry? You have a message? Then you are going to divide it by 2AB, yeah. OK? And you're going to get this one. OK, now go ahead and find cos 90 degrees using your calculator. Tell me, what is cosine of 90 degrees? It's going to be 0. Cos of 90 is 0. OK? Now, if cos C, let's say C is 90 degrees. So what is cos of 90 degrees? Zero. zero. What is zero times negative 2AB? Zero. zero. So you're going to end up C squared is A squared plus B squared, right? Now, let's see how the triangle looks like. If I have angle C to be 90 degrees, <coughs> let's say C is here is 90, then I'm going to get this one is gone because it's 0, of course. Then I'm going to get C squared, which is this one is C. If this one is A, this is B. Then I'm going to have B here and A here. I'm going to have C squared is A squared plus B squared. Is it familiar to you? Pythagorean theory. So that's why it says that cosine law, OK? I mean, Pythagorean theorem is a special case of cosine law. OK, when the angle is 90 degrees, you get the Pythagorean theorem from this expression, which is familiar to everybody. So the, uh, the, 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 the expression works. For the special case of C equal to 90, it gives you back you know, what you knew from grade 9, Pythagorean theorem. OK, the first example, you have triangle PQR you're supposed to find lengths of side Q. So go ahead, and then I'm going to show you the solution. So let's see how we can use this one. First, I'm going to see if I can use the sine law. Remember, the sine law says that I can use it if it is either <coughs> SSA or AAS, meaning if I have two sides and an angle in front of one of the sides, or two angles and the side in front of one of the ang uh, angles. Well, I know that I don't have two angles, so this case is gone. The other case is two sides, so I have two sides. And do I have the angle in front of any one of these sides? You can see that the angle in front of side 15 centimeter is not known, and the angle in front of 17 centimeter is not known. So this means that I can use sine law. Now, but if you look at the uh, drawing here, I have two sides and the angle between them, the contained angle. This means that I can use cosine law. OK? So to use the cosine law, I'm going to say q squared is equal to 17 squared plus 15 squared minus 2 times 17 times 15 times cos of angle in front of side Q, which is 43 degrees. Now, if you simplify 17 squared plus 15 squared minus that one, what, is, what do you get? 141. 141. And then if I take the square root of both sides, I get Q is approximately how much? 11.9 centimeter. That's it. OK, question number two. You have a pendulum which, which has 
uh, yeah, is the arm of the pendulum, which is 94.5 centimeter long. When the pendulum swings from one side to the other side, the horizontal separation is 15.3 centimeter. You are supposed to find the angle through which the pendulum swings. Okay, to do this problem, I'm going to have a pendulum with the bob here, and then it goes along a semicircle, and it returns back here. The length stays the same. It's it starts with 94.5, and it ends up at 94.5, the length of the pendulum. And this distance is going to be 15.3 centimeter. I'm supposed to find this angle. So let's call this guy A. So I can write the equation, the cosine law, the first version of cosine law, instead of using the second version. I'm going to rearrange it later. I don't want to memorize all these formulas. So I, I'm going to write 15.3 squared is equal to 94.5 squared plus 94.5 squared minus 2 times 94.5 times 94.5 times cos of the angle between them. Let's say cos A. Okay, so I'm going to rearrange the formula. I'm going to move this guy to the left to become positive and move this guy to the right to become negative. So I'm going to have 2 times 94.5 times 94.5 cos A is equal to 94.5 squared plus 94.5 squared minus 15.3 squared. To isolate cos A, I'm going to divide by 2 times 94. So I'm going to divide by 92 times 94.5 and 94.5 to isolate cos A. So I'm going to get cos A is going to be 94.5 squared plus 94.5 squared minus 15.3 squared divided by 2 times 94.5 times 94.5. Now, if you use your, the inverse, cal, uh, inverse cos on your calculator, you get A to be approximately what? 8.1. You got 8.1. Let me check to see if the answer is correct. No, the answer is 9.3. Yeah, 